season is finally over. 2020 has officially ended. No, you know, but to, for today's game, um, I'll just say this for the Lions game today. It was a really good game. I enjoyed the game back and forth. You know, there was at one point, like, what, seven lead changes in this game? This was a really good game. Despite this game being completely meaningless and not having any effect in the playoff standings whatsoever. It was still a good game where you just go out and play. You know, sadly in this situation, somebody had to lose in this situation. And of course, the Lions being the Lions, they're always on the short end to stick with this one. So yeah, tough loss to end the year. But hey, you know, the Lions season's over. Lions finished the year 5-11, and losing 37-35. to The big question, of course, in this game, that's why we're in the Stafford jersey this week. Is this Stafford's final game in a Lions uniform? Since that's going to be the big question for Stafford's future with the Lions for 2021 and beyond. Since Stafford next year is in a contract, um, year next year he's in the final year of his contract next year. and But of course, um, the Lions can opt out of that year during the off season, it would be a nineteen million dollar dead cap hit, but they would free up six million in cap in the process. So yeah, maybe. Um honestly, um I honestly I feel like the best thing to do with Stafford is maybe try is try and trade him and get something back for him instead of have him walk after twenty twenty one and get nothing back in return. I don't know, that's going to be the big question. Like, Stafford's future is going to really decide um, what the next head coach GM regimen is going to do. And I think it would make sense It would make sense to trade Stafford since the Lions are going to a full rebuild. Ne since next year is going to be a rebuilding year, and it's going to be a full rebuild. Like, like, next year, I imagine more than likely next year, the Lions are going to be in the same position they are this year. I imagine they're going to be around 5-11 and 11 or worse. Like, they're going to be in the same position next year. And I say they should, be, they should be in a better position with a rookie QB. The good news for the Lions is they're in a good position to get a rookie QB in the top six. Because right now, well, with the Lions losing and then the Giants winning, the Lions actually now move to six in the draft order. And the Lions can move up to fifth in the draft order if the Eagles beat Washington tonight. So yeah, that's going to be interesting there for sure. So Lions could end up in the top five. They won't end up third or fourth because, well, Cincinnati beat... I'm not sure if, the, if they could end up fourth. I know they have the tiebreaker over Atlanta, but Atlanta lost, so that won't happen. But the Lions, and I believe the Panthers, they could end up tied with the Panthers for the fourth pick, for the for whatnot. It's, it's, an, it's a bit of a clusterfuck. It's a clusterfuck for sure in the draft positions. But I imagine the Lions, I think they I think they could end up fifth. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, that's gonna be interesting for sure. But real quick before I continue on, no, I will give a tip of the cap to Ju to Justin Jefferson on the Vikings for officially setting a rookie receiving yards record for having now the most receiving yards by a rookie wide receiver. Even breaking Anquan Bolden's record and even breaking Randy Moss's rookie records. So yeah, congrats to Jefferson. So the big loser in that is the Philadelphia Eagles. Since the Eagles passed on him for Jalen Rigor. All I say to the Eagles is, you should have took Jefferson. Don't forget, the Eagles are also the same franchise that passed on DK Metcalf. And Metcalf left one pick later. Eagles should have took Jefferson. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah. So yeah, the season's over. And well, for this season, to say this season was a massive disappointment, that would be a massive understatement. This season was just a flat-out disappointment. Like, nothing for this team went right. And yada, yada, you get the point. You know, the Lions, some in the offseason, they have a lot of work to do in the offseason in the next three to five. All I say for you folks is, next three to five years are going to be very painful. Because it's a full rebuild. Like, this team is far away from being close to competitive. Like, they got multiple holes. Especially all over the defense. 
I'll say this, though, for our first-round pick. If we don't go QB with the pick, it has to be a defensive pick. I would say either go linebacker or go pass rusher. It would have. I say either QB or pass rusher. And really, this all depends on who the head coach and GM is going to be. But the good news is um, this week, um, the Lions are going to be interviewing um, Robert Saleh and Eric Bieniemy for head coaching vacancies. They're also going to interview Bevel, too, for head coaching, too. And the Lions are also now looking at making a run at Seahawks GM John Schneider. So that will be interesting. Since Schneider really helped the Seahawks, too. But Schneider would have full control in Detroit, unlike Seattle. Since since Seattle, I've heard that was Pete Carroll that gets more that gets authority over Schneider and those kind of decisions. But hey, you know, gonna be interesting. It's gonna be an interesting off season. Like this off season is a crossroads. We're at the crossroads, folks. And I also, like I said before, that's, there's one solution in this situation: blow it up, rebuild for three to five years, and bring on the youth movement. Like, the Lions need to enter next year with one of the youngest teams in the league. Like, anybody that's old or is a veteran needs to go. Like, the Lions need to enter next year young. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting offseason for sure. But, yeah, and of course, um, for this game, I'm more than likely going to be Corey Undoin's last game as a on the Lions coaching staff, he's more than likely going to be somewhere else next year. And Daryl Bevel's future with the Lions, it's really going to decide who what the next head coach, GM Regiment, decides. Since Schneider does also have ties with Bevel in Seattle. And Schneider also had ties with Robert Soleil, too. So that's going to be interesting. But yeah. But yeah, so far in terms of the head coaching candidates, it's looking like I'm. Sh it's still looking like Sh Soleil is the lead candidate. The Lions are most interested right now. So still going to be an interesting couple weeks. We won't know who the next head coach or GM will be until more than likely end of January. But yeah, going to be an interesting offseason for sure. But yeah, um, in terms of draft previews, um, I'm not doing any draft previews until March. Or at least till after the combine. But yeah, QBs are gonna get a lot of attention this year. You know, for QBs though, the Lions would more likely be in a position for either Justin Fields or Zach Wilson. So yeah, gonna be interesting what the Lions do. They could also be in position for um Penn, Penn State linebacker Mika Parsons, too. Cause, you know, the Lions got a lot of holes. And I say the next three to five years are gonna be very rough. Especially with how hard it is to find a franchise quarterback in this league. It is extremely hard to find a QB. But yeah, still though. Um, also, before we can end this off, um, to, all the, to all those Lions fans to quote two asexuals that said all the Lions should have drafted Tua last year. <laughs> really? Really? If, you, if, the, if the Lions would be in a better position with Tua than Stafford, then how do you explain Tua and the Dolphins today against the Bills? Let's be real. The Dolph after that game today, the Dolphins don't deserve to make the playoffs. They don't deserve to be in the playoffs after shitting the bed and not showing up when it matters. I'll say this here. If you cannot show up when it matters, you don't deserve the opportunity to play in the postseason. At this point, I hope Indianapolis makes it in over ten over um Miami. Since I'm with Miami's loss, some um, Tennessee's now locked in no matter what happens between their game against Houston. But yeah. Oh, sorry about that. That was just my cat there. But yeah. And also, there's one more thing we should say before we end this off. I first also want to congratulate the Cleveland Browns and the Browns fan base for making the playoffs for the first time since 2002. The Browns are in the playoffs. First time in 18 years. So yeah, congrats to Cleveland on making the playoffs. Three years after the Browns went 0-16, they make the postseason. Ironically, the Lions made the postseason three years after going 0-16. Coincidence? And the Browns even took a QB with that first overall pick after going 0-16. 
Same deal with the Lions when they took Stafford. Coincidence? I think not. But yeah, congrats to the Browns. And honestly, the Browns deserve it. The fan base badly needs it. But yeah, going to be interesting to see how Cleveland does in the wild card round against Pittsburgh. Since they'll be playing the Steelers in the wild card round. But yeah, going to be interesting for sure. Going to be an interesting wild card round for sure. But yeah. So yeah, congrats to the Browns on making the postseason for the first time in 18 years. Well deserved. But yeah, that wraps up the season. The season's over. So yeah, in terms of channel update, um, not much Lions content's not really going to be discussed until the Lions get their next head coach and GM in. Um, I might do a look at head coach and GM searches and get my thoughts on each one. I might do that. I'll have to just I'll have to think on it. You know, I get I'm pretty busy this week with work, so I'll have to think on it. Um, I'll have piston highway videos, of course, for sure. And I'll also have some I'll also have um Red Wing videos coming up soon. In terms of Red Wing highlights too. With Red Wings hockey NHL season coming up this month. Um I do have a couple of NASCAR videos planned for the for the for January too. Um, I am doing the play, NFL playoff predictions video that later this week. I am also doing the um I am going to be doing the Lions um trash talk vid later this week to show everyone what the true problems have been on the Lions. Also, I also want to show Jackass Tribe how you trash talk the Lions properly, not the right way and not his delusional bullshit way. So yeah, you'll have that video to look forward to, too. But yeah, as I feel like, you know what? Let's do the trash talk vid on the lines to end this era before we go into a full rebuild. Perfect way to end this era. But yeah, since, <laughs> since, really, since this was a, really a wasted opportunity with Stafford. Like, honestly, another wasted year for Stafford. Honestly, Stafford deserves some rain. He's not getting it with the Lions. Beyond, yeah, of course, I'm. Of course, I'm in February. I'll be back to the NASCAR review videos, and back to defending the NASCAR Heavyweight Championship. But yeah, that's all gonna be pretty much from there on. Not really gonna do any Lions videos of note until March, when free agency starts. Or at least when we after the draft combine. When so I then I'll do, get the draft previews. But yeah, that's all I gotta say here. Peace out. See you in the off season.